This is Snap Circuits. It's a toy for teaching kids electronics, but you can actually teach adults with this as well. But everything's big because it's kids. Big speaker, big switch, big LED, big Arduino module, and it all snaps on a grid. Now, this one I actually 3D printed so I can make my own sizes and set it aside. But what's really interesting about Snap Circuits is they have these modules. This is an alarm module for building an alarm circuit. This is a Space War IC for making interesting sounds. This is a motion detector for sensing movement and build a circuit around it. But each of these modules has a circuit board inside and brings the essential connections to the outside so you can just snap to it. And then I thought it'd be nice if we could just build our own little building blocks, put them on a common base and just connect them to make our own little electronic circuits. And that's when I thought of Gridfinity. I did a little searching and found out I wasn't the first one to think of this because there's already Gridfinity designs for holding a meter, holding an Arduino, holding a stepper motor. But what I couldn't find is a module for developing little circuits like this. So in previous videos, I showed you how I can make custom breadboards with 3D printing and clips, which I found some really low cost ones from Adafruit to make this even more affordable to do. So I made a Gridfinity compatible breadboard module that actually fits into a cup. So you could actually make all your connections, develop your circuit, and then eventually put the circuit board inside of here with just a few of these clips for connection. And it all fits Gridfinity. And if you're good with electronics, you can make your own little custom blocks for this Gridfinity circuits and sell them if you want to make a few dollars, just like people make shields for Arduino and sell those. So I'll show you how I made this custom breadboard with its base so you can build your own Gridfinity circuits module. But eventually you'll need a circuit board. And for that, I recommend today's sponsor, PCBWay.com. PCBWay.com is a great place to get circuit boards. I get all my circuit boards there. You can get 10 pieces for $5 plus shipping. In my case, it's $27 for everything. 10 boards for $27, including shipping. That's only $2.70 each. That's a great deal. They also do 3D printing, and now they got a special going on for TPU. That's the flexible stuff, which sometimes is hard to print. So you can have them printed at a great discount right now. So I highly recommend you check out PCBWay.com for all your electronic projects. So I started with this Gridfinity Generator online tool. It's awesome. You can do a basic bin, you can do a base plate, and you can even do connector clips for connecting things together. And it's really easy to use. And once you got a design, you can just download it and 3D print it. I just made a really basic bin and then brought it into Tinkercad because I just wanted the base. So I cut the top of it off in Tinkercad and it left me a Gridfinity compatible base that I could work from. Then I flipped it over on the bed and then I used my previously designed breadboard insert, combined it with that base and it cuts away the areas that I wanted and it left me with a breadboard shell. And I'll flip it over here so you can see the top of it looks like a breadboard. The bottom has its slots for the clips to go in. And it makes it really easy to make breadboards. And then from there, I put little nubs on the side of it so it would snap into this Gridfinity cup that I actually found online. And I, I don't know where I found it. Otherwise, I'd give credit. But these two come together to form the design that I'm talking about which is for creating a Gridfinity circuit. So it just kind of snaps on top. You can store whatever you want underneath. So you can actually make this box taller if you want. And then it fits into a Gridfinity base. So you could have four across and then something above it, or you could fill this whole thing with these Gridfinity development modules. So essentially you got a huge breadboard at that point. But the idea is you build little circuits on here and then you can take them off and store them away. I printed these on my A1 and A1 Mini, and to get this grid to show up on the first layer, you have to use the Arachne setting, not the Classic setting, which is the default. Classic setting will not do this first layer. So if I scroll down using Classic, those grids don't show up until the second layer. And now you got a mess when it tries to print that. You need that first layer to support the second layer. So you have to set it to Arachne, otherwise it doesn't work. So just click on Arachne, and then just slice it with the normal settings and you'll see that that first layer comes out just like this. And here it is on A1 Mini, did a really good job with that first layer. And when it's done, 
you got the breadboard module and then the cup, which those two can snap together. But then you need the clips to go into the breadboard frame in order to make it work. Well, I found these at Adafruit for $2.95. You get a hundred of these clips, the same ones that goes into the breadboards. So you get this row of them, 10 rows of 10. So hundred pieces, that's less than three cents each. And you just got to cut them off that strip and then push them into the 3D print that I created. And the slots really hold them tight. Um, they typically will put like tape or sticker over the top of this. I didn't do any kind of design where it locks them in. They kind of lock themselves in, but you could do that if you want. There's definitely improvements to make. But once those are all in, you've got the breadboard. And I just smashed it down to make sure everything is smooth. Now, this will actually fit into the Gridfinity base, but I prefer putting it on the cup and then putting that in the base. So there you have it. This is a breadboard for Gridfinity. And this is a typical setup of what you might be using to make your own little modules. And there's already designs out there that people have come up with for Gridfinity that works great with this. I found this Arduino Gridfinity compatible holder from Patrick Rolls. And then there's others from Nicholas Babetis, who has multiple designs, including the stepper motor base. And then I found this one from Casp IR, and it holds a meter, or in my case, a temperature meter. The Gridfinity generator tool also has an option to make a custom box, a 3D printed box that will hold these little modules in place. Now, I already had a 3D printed box I wanted to use, so I used the grid generator gave it dimensions, and it made a grid that fit perfectly in the bottom of my 3D printed box. So then I can store these individual modules inside of it. So what do you guys think of this? I really like the fact you can put it in a box and store away these modules and bring them out later or put a whole design in like this and fit it into a box and maybe put them on slots of the shelf. And if you want to know more about making breadboards, I'll put links to the videos where I showed these two guys. Also, if you want to learn more about programming a tiny AT Tiny 85, the little microcontroller I show here, I have a video where I showed how I made a case for the programmer, but also some information on how to use it. And so overall, I think I didn't invent anything new here because other people have come up with ideas, but I like the fact that you can build your own little modules like this, store them away in a box, or even store the whole circuit away like this in a box and then eventually have your own little circuits that you could plug into Gridfinity and build whatever you want. The possibilities are endless if you think about it. What do you think about all this? Let me know in the comments below. I want to give a thank you to all my Patreon supporters. You guys make all this possible. Thank you very much. So if you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is the best way to do that. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here. Thanks for watching.